Would you like to change the font size on your Genesis child theme? Well, actually, it's not as hard as you may think. So today's quick tip is going to be all about how to change your Genesis child theme font size quickly and easily without having to know any code. So my name is Jen Tokenyuk. I'm your digital CEO. And today we're going to walk through the back end of our WordPress dashboard. And I'm going to show you a new-ish tool, which is called the built-in CSS editor. So um, you're going to go first to the appearance tab and under there we're going to go down to the theme editor. Now the theme editor may seem a little bit scary if you're not familiar with code. You might think you're going to break something. Uh, there's a lot of letters and things that don't make sense as you get down into here that look a little scary, but I promise they're not. If you're using a Genesis child theme, the cool thing is that you have a child theme that you have chosen and then you have Genesis never edit the Genesis theme. The Genesis theme is only to be edited by those coding wizards who know what all these things mean. We get our own child theme where we can change things and it doesn't affect anything that they do and any changes they make don't change anything in how our site looks. So um, it used to be in the old days you would have to create your own custom style sheet and put it in here and know a lot of code. Well, thanks to this new built-in CSS editor, you don't have to do that anymore. You just have to know where to find the code for your font, copy it, and then we can change it visually, which is really cool. So uh, as you're scrolling down here, there's a table of contents here. The first thing that we're going to change is we're going to change the actual body text. So what you type into paragraphs. Um, regular Genesis, like my theme, was a 16-point type. So it was almost as small as what you're seeing here on my screen, which made it really hard for my readers to, to read it. It was just very condensed. I was on other people's blogs, and I'm thinking, how do they have these beautiful, huge fonts? Well, this is how we do it. So we're looking for typographical elements, which you can see in the table of contents isn't too far down. Okay, so you're going to scroll down. We go to box sizing, float clearing, and then we find typographical elements. So the part that you want to copy is from body down to this ending closing tab. Okay, so you're just going to select that, hit control C on a PC or command C on a Mac. Copy that, and then we're going to head over right down here to the Customize menu. Okay, this is where that built-in CSS customizer lives. So go to Customize, and then in here we have this additional CSS tab. So you can see that I've already pasted this in here right at the top. This is that same code, but you might have noticed that before my font size was a 20. So to really see this in real time, you don't want to be on your home page because you don't see everything. So go ahead and navigate to any page on your blog. And then we will be able to see our text in real time. So right now my text is at 20. Now if I change it back to 16 like it was, so all I'm doing is I'm changing this number. See how little it was? And I didn't like it. So <laughs> I made it 20 and you can visually see exactly what it's going to look like right inside of here. There's no saving the style sheet, going to look at the blog, seeing what it looks like. You can do the whole thing right here. And when you're ready to make your change, just hit publish. Okay. And then it'll change it site-wide, not just on one page. Now, if you try, whoops, hold on. I guess I could have gone that way. I really don't want to change anything. Um, if you try to change this in this style sheet, it doesn't change anything. So this is where a lot of people get into trouble as they go in here and they're like, okay, I found it. I found the typographical elements. I'm not going to copy it. Instead, I'm just going to, uh, you know, change it right here. If you change it here, nothing happens. <laughs> this is where people get so frustrated. So I'm glad that they really pointed out this built-in CSS editor because it's really easy to use. So the next thing that we want to change is our headers. And so they call them headings, but this is our H1 through H6 headers. Uh, H1 is your title. H2 is the one that you tend to use all the time. That's the one that you're going to use to break up your content. H3 breaks it down a little bit farther than that, almost like a table of contents. So for example, if we were talking in, eight, in headers, 
the table of contents here would be an H1, this would be an H2, this would be an H3, and then if we had something you know, even farther in there, that might be an H4. I don't use H5 and H6. I don't think I've ever used them. Um, so you don't have to stress so hard about what they're going to look like, but you definitely want your H1 to H4 to look good. So um, the headings are a little farther down, but what this does is it gives you an idea where to look for it. Um, so we're going to scroll down here and we're going to find headings. They're there. Okay. So with headings, what you want to copy is you want to copy this H1 all the way through all the different font sizes, all the way down to H6 and the closing tab. Okay. Make sure you get all that. Don't just copy the H1 to H6. So what you're going to see is there's going to be different pixel sizes for all of these. So we're going to copy these and then we're going to go back into our customize menu. And you go ahead and you just paste that directly underneath the other code that we already pasted in for the body tag. Okay. So you'll see that I have my H1 through H6. It's exactly what I copied from over there. But then I started changing my sizes. So what I recommend is start with H2 because that's the one that you're going to see most of the time. Like this is my H1. This is my title. Um, this is an H2. And then this is an H2. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that those are a size that you like because that, again, it's the most custom or the one that you use the most. Now, you, there isn't a huge difference. Like this is an H3, I'm sure it is, uh, because it goes underneath. This is an H2. There isn't a ton of difference between them. They're a little bit smaller than the other one. But if you start with like your H3 or H4, then all of a sudden your H2 might be humongous. So what I did was I just kind of incrementally bumped them up. I started with my H1 being huge, it's a 42, and then I went down to a 40, a 36, a 34, a 32. Uh, and then you'll, I mean, these are going to be smaller, but again, I really don't use them all that often. But again, you can do this visually. So for example, let's say I want to change my H3 size and, or let's, yeah, let's change the H3 size. So let's make this a 38 instead. Okay, so you see it changed it. I want to put it back to 36. Now it's a little bit smaller. But let's say just, you know, so you can see it visually, let's change it to a 30. See how small that is? Um, I really like to call out my headers because headers are the way that, you know, Google can figure out what your content is. That's how the bot kind of goes through there and goes, oh, look at these headings. It's the table of contents. I know what your post is about. I know how to help you rank. So again, once you like these sizes, go ahead and hit publish. Um, I don't want to change my settings. I'm going to show you the last thing, which is the actual uh, title. Changing the H1 isn't enough. You actually do have to change the title as well. So we're back here in our style sheet. It's called a content header. I don't know. I know it's way the heck down here. So <laughs> in Genesis, it's like in my child theme, it's down in the 900s. So you just have to go down and find it. Um, it's not that hard to find. Just scroll down. You're going to find your content title. Let's see where mine was. I think it's like 924 entry title. Okay. So this is the one that we want to, to copy. Go ahead and copy this. Again, we're going to head over there and just make this the same size as, um, as your, as your H1. Um, and it is when you get over there, notice that it was much smaller here. So go ahead and copy it, go over to customize. You're going to put it right in there and then go ahead and hit publish. So you can put a lot of different things in here and see how my entry title is the same as my H1. You want yours to be exactly the same way. So if you've gotten this far and you're not on Genesis and, and I applaud you for getting this far thinking, you know, Hey, I'm going to learn this. This actually does work on, on WordPress. I, this, uh, you know, custom CSS screen 
isn't just a Genesis thing. It's just that, you know, your code is going to be in a different place on your style sheet. It won't, you know, your entry header won't be on line 924 like mine is. But use these um, and it's it makes it so much easier for your readers to be able to read your content. It's going to reduce your bounce rate. It's going to make your blog look amazing and uh, and you can do it all visually without having to know any code so if you love tips like this subscribe like hit the bell because <laughs> uh, I, I post stuff like this at least once a week uh, whenever I find some cool new trick that's like doesn't require any code I want to pass it along to you guys if you want to read the whole post that I wrote about this um, there's some visual you know, elements and images and things like that in there. I'll drop the link to the post below this, but I hope you enjoyed this. Have an amazing day and I can't wait to see what your blog looks like. So drop me a comment when you change it and let me know how it worked for you.